for the introduction. My name is Danny Schaeffler, and um, as the title on the screen suggests, today's talk highlights the Advanced High Strength Steels Application Guidelines, which is published by World Auto Steel. I'm going to be covering a brief history, but then spend most of my time discussing the latest version of the guidelines that was actually released just less than two weeks ago. I mean, of course, uh, the computer behaves. There you go. Uh, World Auto Steel is the automotive group of the World Steel Association. World Auto Steel consists of 20 leading sheet steel producers from around the world with the mission to advance and communicate steel's unique ability to meet the automotive industry's needs and challenges in a sustainable and environmentally responsible way. In our excellent symposium today, we've heard from representatives from some of these companies, as well as from universities and other organizations which have partnered with these member companies. In the 1990s, the International Iron and Steel Institute acknowledged that their automotive industry customers were facing the conflicting challenge of reduced weight for improved emissions and fuel economy performance, while meeting the ever-increasing safety regulations globally, all while producing a cost-effective body structure. New grades of steel were introduced, which help attack these challenges, but these grades had forming, joining, and processing characteristics, which were different than the mild steels, which were common at most companies around the world. The IISI consortium of 35 steel companies from 18 countries around the world launched the Ultralight Steel Auto Body Program to demonstrate a lightweight steel auto body structure that meets a wide range of safety and performance criteria. Following ULSAB were projects which highlighted closures and suspensions, as well as other vehicle parts and systems. The IISI consortium evolved into World Auto Steel, and their latest project is known as Steel Emotive. You can visit steelemotive.world to learn more about that program. Complementing these vehicle demonstrators was the 2003 initial publication of the Advanced High Strength Steel Application Guidelines, which so showcased global best practices on how to form and join advanced steel grades. By 2009, version four of the AHSS application guidelines was released and contained 32 different HSLA and advanced high strength steel grades. Version five was released in May 2014 with a portfolio of 50 different commercially available automotive steels. At the time version six was, was released in May 2017, there were 38 unique advanced high strength steel grades alone. Dr. Stuart Keeler um, of the famed Keeler equation for forming limit diagrams was the technical editor through version six. The next evolution of the guidelines transforms them into a mobile friendly online database where users can browse and search to quickly find specific information of interest. A beta version of the site was unveiled at the end of June, and as the technical editor for the metallurgy and forming sections, I'm here today to take you through some of the highlights and features. The new online format enables timely updates as new technology and grades are developed. Currently, there are about 150 articles with 1,000 citations, many of which are linked back to the original source. There are three primary sections of the guidelines, metallurgy, forming, and joining. In addition, the website houses the AHSS Insights technical blog. The applications guidelines presents an overview of 15 types of sheet steel grades, ranging from ultra low carbon steels to the latest third generation steels. Articles go into greater detail as warranted by the topic. For example, the page on bake hardenable steels also includes a discussion on the bake hardenability of advanced high strength steels. Another example, is that the article on trip steels includes information about the trip effect and the newer grades which rely on retained austenite for their advanced properties. On this page, in the left column are the grade names, 
And on the right two columns, that shows tags and categories, which allow for advanced searching by keywords and topics. The working group members believed it was important to define what we meant by third generation advanced high strength steels. Advanced high strength steels in general were defined as martensitic and multi-phase steels having a minimum specified tensile strength of at least 440 megapascal. Third generation advanced high strength steels are multi-phase steels engineered to develop enhanced formability as measured in tensile, sheared edge, and or bending tests. Typically, these steels rely on retained austenite in a bainite or martensite matrix and potentially some amount of ferrite and or pre precipitates, all in specific proportions and distributions to develop these enhanced properties. Global commercialization of third generation steels started around the year 2020. Steels with very high minimum specific specified tensile strength are sometimes referred to as ultra high strength steels. Several companies choose 980 megapascal as the threshold where ultra high strength begins, while others use thresholds of 1180 megapascal or 1270 megapascal. There is no generally accepted definition among the producers or users of the product. However, the difference between advanced and ultra high strength steels are in terminology only. They are not separate products. The actions taken by the manufacturing community to form, join, or process these steels is ultimately a function of the steel grade, thickness, and mechanical properties. Whether these steels are called advanced or ultra does not impact the technical response. Aside from an explanation of this rationale, the term ultra high strength steels are not used in these guidelines unless information is extracted from papers or presentations which use the term. We have tried to list the specific grades and strength levels in question and leave out the marketing terms. The often replicated global formability diagram shows the relative strength, total elongation performance of the many families of steel grades. The latest version now includes press quenched seals and incorporates the latest production information to generate the size and placement of the bubbles. As more data is gathered, we plan on producing a local formability diagram, which compares strength against a parameter like the VDA bending angle or hole expansion ratio. In these diagrams, the relative position of certain grades will change, highlighting, for example, the superior local formability performance of ferrite bainite steels and complex phase steels compared with dual phase steels. Nearly every section of the forming content was expanded since version 6, with many new topics added. You'll find discussions on the shear affected zone and how that influences cut edge stretchability true fracture strain, and alternative related measures for local formability characterization are discussed in detail. Guest authors contributed articles on Industry 4.0 and additive manufacturing. The discussion on simulation includes content on the importance of selecting appropriate yield criteria and hardening laws. This is probably a good time to say that none of this content is targeted at the PhD level or even that of a practitioner focused on any of our, uh, on any one narrow scope of activities. The simulation content will likely not add anything to the knowledge of any of our presenters today. However, the guidelines provide a great overview for new employees and students to understand the scope of all of the aspects which must be contemplated when using advanced steel grades. As you would expect, we have an extensive section on springback and springback reduction strategies. We describe how accurate modeling of the Bauschinger effect and the decrease in elastic modulus are key inputs in achieving accurate simulations. Springback is easier to attack when you understand that the magnitude of springback is a function of the uniformity of stress distribution through the thickness direction of the wall of a form sheet. An optimized combination of draw beads and stake beads promotes a uniform stress distribution through the thickness 
which leads to improved springback control. One area where, where we are particularly pr proud of is our sections on press hardening steels, mostly written by Dr. Aaron Bilur. These articles cover all aspects of press hardened steels, including their history, the current and projected market, the numerous production processes and required equipment, the resultant properties, corrosion protection alternatives, and a detailed exploration of the vehicles which use these grades. There are 20 to 30 figures in each of these articles, and most have over 50 citations linked back to the original source where those sources were available. Our page on corrosion protection of press hardened steels includes content on zinc and aluminum silicon coatings, highlighting the merits and challenges with each type of coating. Certainly uncoated press hardened steels are an option for dry areas of a vehicle, but even these will need to be descaled typically by shot blasting. General Motors is approaching this from a different direction. They are evaluating a different base metal alloy chemistry that avoids scale formation in the press hardening furnace. On the website, you will also find information about joining of advanced high strength steels to other steels, as well as non-steel components. Highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, highlighted here are the many articles related to resistant spot welding broken down by the process, performance, testing, and modeling. This section on joining was authored and edited by Menachem Kimchi of The Ohio State University. Menachem had a similar role in version six of these guidelines with the current content vastly expanded and enhanced. Integrated into the website is the AHSS Insights blog with new posts monthly. Topical content allows a global readership to comment and engage the community with questions. Within this blog, you'll find several articles written by guest authors on topics about which they have particular expertise. Also on this site is great technical information about projects done under the auspices of World Auto Steel. For example, a three-year study on liquid metal embrittlement showed that the risk of LME cracking greatly diminishes simply by diligently adhering to proper weld procedures like minimizing heat input, using sufficient hold times to allow zinc solidification, and proper electrode alignment. Partners on this study included Paderborn University in Germany, the Institut de Soudure in France, and Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. The results from this detailed study are available as a free download. And of course, pertinent articles within the joining guidelines are linked to this study. Tying all of this together is an enhanced search feature. Each of the articles and reports are tagged with numerous categories and keywords, which become terms on which searches are based. The number of new sheet steel grades commercialized over the past 20 years have given manufacturers many more options from which to choose. Some cold stamping options include grades with a four or five fold increase in tensile strength compared with mild steels with hot forming grades even stronger. The ductility decrease associated with the increasing strength is not as severe in these new grades. However, there are some unique metal flow and strengthening characteristics that caution against taking your knowledge of forming mild steels and simply upscaling it to address these substantially higher strength steels. World Auto Steel, the consortium of the world's leading automotive steel suppliers, has published the Advanced High Strength Steel Application Guidelines to provide users with best practices and lessons learned on how to best form and join these new grades. The latest release takes the guidelines from being a single PDF and transitions them into a searchable linked format housed at ahssinsights.org. This online format allows timely incorporation of new information and understanding related to these new grades. I encourage all of you to visit our website, ahssinsights.org, and let me know if you have uh, content which you think could benefit our community. And with that, I thank you for your interest, and I welcome any questions that you might have. 
Thank you very much for